here's the deal. When I grew up, I was part of the generation where you go explore and you have fun and you play. And, um, you, you, you had exercise and you got to get out and do stuff, hang out with your friends. We didn't, well, I mean, computers was coming out and I would say my friend had like slow dial up internet on a big Apple computer. My brother had a Commodore 64 and you had to like type in the, I don't know, CD ROM dot, whatever, and it had to go search it off the floppy disk. So like, that wasn't fun to stay inside when I was little. Um, and then when I got to be a teenager, my friends lived kind of far away. So we used to walk to each other's houses miles away. I used to ride my bike to my old neighborhood 10 miles away. I'm like, what was I, like eight years old? Uh, one time I walked 10 miles, I was 10 years old, from babysitting my nephew in the middle of the night. Um, and this was in Spokane, Washington. Uh, I went back there and it ain't like um, quiet little town anymore, I guess. Uh, there's like more activities going on, if you know what I mean. So maybe, maybe I wouldn't have, you know, my kids don't have, but like, and I know nowadays a lot of stuff is more protective and scared and things on the news. I know on the news there was some kidnappings here and there, but I was never like, oh my God, you can't go nowhere. Um, oh, you have to mm, stay inside and be sheltered. You know, ever since I was I don't know, like 15 years old, I always had a job. Uh, I was never at home. And then when I was 18 years old, I got my car and I went across the whole United States of America and moved to South Carolina uh, by myself in my car. So that was, I don't know, 3,000 miles away uh, by myself. And I've always never wanted to be stuck. You know, one location in Spokane, I knew that wasn't going to be anything there for me job-wise and stuff like that. It's like really depressing to me. Like, the unknown had more possibilities for me that I could, I could find something else to do. But, you know, life has curveballs for you. I ended up getting pregnant at 18. Ended up having my oldest daughter at 19. So, I'm not saying I know everything, but I've been doing everything on my own ever since I can remember. So, for me to be held, oh, and then let me tell you this, for four years after, you know, I got rid of my ex-boyfriend and I was raising the girls by myself, I had to be in charge of everything when I was with my ex-boyfriend. He was a help a tiny bit, but I was in charge of everything. And when I was married to my ex-husband, he was no help. I was in charge of everything. So I've been in charge of everything my whole life. And so when I was single for four years before I met Brian, I literally had everything on my shoulders. And, okay, but it lets you walk through, not drive through. Okay. Yeah, so I had everything on my shoulders, and I made the decisions, and I paid the bills, and I went to work, and I took care of my kids, and I did everything, you know, like that. So, when I met Brian, it's like, Brian, I mean, Brian's not going to sit here and tell me, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. I mean, he's just not, not going to do it. He'll say, oh, um, I think it's not very safe. I don't recommend you do it. But I'm grown and, you know, oh, this is what I told Brian. I said, I could be scared 
and not do anything, not take chances, not go out there, not walk, not do what I, is needed. I could just sit here in the truck like I did for the first year that I was in the truck with you. I could still continue to do that, right? The outcome would be that I got still fat, sick, and tired. And that's what was happening. Or I could get out there and exercise. And I could take a chance on something happening to me. But you know what? I'd rather die trying to lose this weight and get out here and take a darn chance on my health than just sit there and be scared so I could be safe and be killing myself with my own body weight because this weight, I tell you, if it can be lost, probably would just diet, but you know, I, I like I said, I did 60 pounds that way, but I don't know how long that will last. And I do like exercising. It's just I got into a really lazy rut. And I was overweight and I couldn't even move. And my legs are so swollen and everything hurts and I'm having boils on my legs. And my skin rubbing was like on fire excruciating pain. Okay, so now my skin's not rubbing. I lost some weight, but I wanna, I wanna set a goal to get down to 120. And it's not really about the 120. It's not about being skinny. It's not about any, any of that. It's about a lot of it has to do with maybe this HS will get better at that point. Look how much confidence I've already got that I can talk on social media. I used to be so social anxiety. I would not speak in front of anybody, let alone on the world. And I posted some videos and hardly anybody watched them. So, it's, and I hardly got it. Out. I mean, I'm appreciative of the subscribers that I have. And I have 78 on YouTube right now. But, and I appreciate everybody. But here's the deal. When you have social anxiety, you feel like everybody's going to watch the videos and they're going to laugh at you. And, they're, and even if they did right now, I'd be like, oh, well, I'm out here doing something about it. You know? And I had like one, one mean person already on the, uh, YouTube. And they said, oh, look, he brought his lot lizard with him on the road. And I was like, at first it gave me anxiety. I was like, oh no, people are going to read that. And then, um, what happened, I posted about an accident. And this is what had happened, because it was um, truck driver related. A UPS uh, truck driver uh, crashed into somebody else. And so, you know, if I see something on the road, I'm doing YouTube, so I'm going to record it. Like, this lady, she like, put this message on there, and she was like, Oh, you're so insensitive. Basically, how dare you? You post about like, my family. Oh, we got it on this. Um, how dare you post about my family? I can't really see where the trail goes. I think it goes around that way. It's kind of getting darker, and it's kind of getting time for me to turn around anyway. I just I don't want to fight to get over around those trees and then have to turn right back anyway. So, whatever. Executive decision made. It's in the moment of what was happening. I was just recording it. Like an accident, no big deal, whatever. So my social anxiety like went through the roof and my video was like um, like getting a lot of views, but I was like, oh, I gotta take it down because when you have social anxiety, I have to have to take a break. Like everybody's judging you and that you can't, um, you just can't handle it because it's like too much and it's like an overload of mm, hearts like racing I can't anxiety is hard for me to describe unless it's happening and even if it's happening I can't really describe it. it's like I can't breathe and anyway I'm gonna take a break hold on I take a drink of me I almost like see I almost Oh yeah, uh, we switched to this uh, water. I think it's spring water, natural spring water. We'll do spring water because it's supposed to be better. 
And so if we went down to the spring and got our own water from the pipe coming out of the rock and boiled it and somehow in the truck and then we uh, let it cool down then we bottled it ourselves and then we only drank that i'm sure that'd be so much healthier or we got a berkey or something and there's limited space in the truck i'm sure that would be better for us so then the next step that we can get close to spring water is getting in here even though the microplastics from the bottle is probably going to kill us anyway the best we can do for right now until we get some other thing going on i don't know what our future holds maybe travel the world we tried the food in cozumel and we didn't have any stomach issues so I like a little lake out there i didn't get to show you that see how dark it's getting yeah Whoever watches this last last video I had posted about walking, there's only four viewers. So if y'all like me taking you on adventures walking, let me know. Uh, if you're watching this video, please like and subscribe and comment. If you have suggestions about content or whatever, if you like these walking videos, let me know. I really enjoy um hiking I, I, it's hard right now but it's gonna get easier because you know you build up your stamina the person that's watching right now you might be a person that's stuck inside your house or you might be a person that just wants to listen to somebody talk about crap my mouth is kind of tight as a clam but after i get walking I get a little more, uh, less shy or something like that. And then as I told Brian, I was like, I can't, I can't shut up after I get going. Fast I'm going. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm going downhill right now. And this is like what I like about hiking. I like that I get it like a second wind. It makes me want to go. And I don't, I don't really mind walking, you know? Especially out in the woods and the nature, it really helps me uh, feel good, you know. You get endorphins and stuff. But back to people watching. So you might need, you might be somebody who needs a little encouragement to get up and go around your neighborhood and whatever, you know, or get out in nature or, you know use your scooter to go around the the uh, living room or stand up in your chair up and down 10 times or let sit in your chair and lift your leg up 20 times each or you know whatever wherever you're at that's where you can start you um i heard this so shout out to like werewolf carnivore i think his name is He's a semi-truck driver, so shout out to him if he ever sees this video. Probably not. But he says you can do exercises with your arms. He says you can um, you can do sprint arm sprints. And he shows it like like go like this like a weird one. You don't have to sprint with your legs. You can just use your arms and go real fast. Like woo, you know, with your arms. And really, this is what I think about exercise. And when they exercise, it's like 30 minutes to an hour. And then they go home. And then they're like, oh, I did that exercise. And they might not exercise again for another week. Or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, So think about that. If someone that's getting into exercise, which I would say me and Brian are, and that's about like our schedule of going to the gym. Just think about that time right there. 30 minutes to an hour. I try to add these walks in to bump up that number. But think about how much more than that you can do in your own home. Just standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down. Like, All right, let's say you want to exercise. I'm going to show you a little bit of exercise you could do. Take something. Take a water bottle. And you can go like this. 
and it might be silly. It might be silly. But imagine if you just sat there and did this for a while. This is no weight at all, but it's free. I mean, it's not free because you had to buy it, but you know, you probably have a water bottle. Don't drink sodas. Drink water. And you just did this, or you did this. Okay, let's say you did all this. Let's say you went up and touched the ground. Up, touch the ground. Up, touch the ground. Up, touch the ground. Okay? Let's say you threw it up the ground, caught it. Threw it up in the air, threw it up in the air, and caught it. Okay? Threw it up in the air, and caught it. Okay? See? Put this down. Stand up. Grab it. Stand up. Put it down. Stand up. Grab it. Stand up. Okay? That's easy, right? I am always going to make a music, I mean, a exercise video. Alright, let's, okay, now, here's um, something I've been working on in the truck. Practicing um, squats. This is not something that I'm good at, so don't mark my words on this one. But anyway, so I said, okay, what if I went like this? Because my knees, I have a real bad problem on my knees because of, like I said, all the swelling and inflammation really caused me to have knee problems. So getting down is really hard for me. But let's just say I did this. The best I could do. Best I could do. Okay, I'm going to turn. Show you this one. Okay. I'm going to go down. Best I could do. Best I can do. He said, I need to be sitting up. That's the best I could do, guys. Okay, up. Back down. He said, back up. Okay. It reminds me of basketball, you know, when you're like this. You're supposed to do this. Okay, let's make that an exercise. So you're like this, defending your thing. You're like this. Okay, maybe this would be a good exercise for you. This is all stuff you could do in your house. Um, let's let's fight somebody, okay? Maybe you'd be like, boom, and then put them up, and then boom, put them up, and then boom, put them up. Right? Run in place. What about run in place? Okay, let's do run in place. Run, 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 run in place, run in place. All right, let's just say you can't do all those things. Like at, like me at first, and I was laying in the bed. Okay, let's pretend I'm laying in the bed. All I could do is lift my leg up in the bed. This was my exercise. Laying down, lift that leg up, and then switch. Lift that leg up, lift it up. You lay it in the bed. Look, here's another one I was doing. Crossover. And crossover. You're kind of stretching those hips, right? And then I was standing up and I would do this. Turn. And I felt like, you know, stretching, stretching the body. But, you know, you can do whatever. Just as long as you're moving. But think about it. If someone's at the gym 30 minutes to an hour and then they leave, but let's say you did this for 30 minutes to an hour at home, you just moved, you did something. Let's say you did it every day. You just took out a little time out of your day to do something. I mean, I could take this advice too. I could start doing it too. Maybe I could make it a challenge. A 30 minute a day movement challenge. Maybe we could start a 30 minute, day, 30 minute a day movement challenge together. You know? Like maybe that could be a new thing. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some sprints. So. I know you guys can't see this. So I'm just going to run back and forth. And you can do this in your living room. You know? You could do it. Alright, so it's getting pretty dark, so I better start going some more. 
really hard for you to see. Turn this around. All right. So, yeah, visibility is probably not as great anymore for you to see what's happening. Alright, let's shine this. It's gonna be a homemade lantern. The DIY lantern. Shine this in my water bottle. And then so you can see that. It doesn't help for seeing where I'm going. It really doesn't. But y'all can see me. But now I can't see really good. Alright, maybe it's my glasses. Hold on. It's not my glasses. Because my glasses are kind of tinted. All right, let my eyes adjust. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm doing okay. All right. Hold that down. It's like if I look into that light, I can't see where I'm going because now I'm blind. All right, so this is the fork in the road. Don't go that way, I'll get really lost. I remember that. I need some breadcrumbs. Alright, now we're going down this hill. Try to shine the light. So you guys can see. I bet y'all are like, why does she do this to herself? Why does she get herself in these predicaments? Dangerous, right? So dangerous. But, you know what? You only live once. You only have this one life to get unfat. If it takes me walking in the woods in, in the nighttime by a flashlight, if that's what it's going to take for me to lose uh, 80... Let's see how much weight I have to go. I am 100... I'm sorry, I'm 200 pounds. I want to be 120. I want to lose 80 more pounds, y'all. I can't do that by sitting down. I can't. It's just not going to happen. I got to do this, y'all. I got to do it. There's there's no excuse anymore. I'm, I'm going to be 44 years old in March. It's only going to get harder the more older I get. And... It's going to get easier diet-wise because I know the way to eat now. I know that meat is the way. It's the only way that's ever worked for me that I can eat a big, huge, satisfying meal and not be hungry all day long. It's the only way. And my body's not crying for nutrients. I'm not upset. I'm not hungry. I'm not starving. I'm not craving anything anymore. You know how crazy that is? That's crazy. I didn't think this was going to happen. I didn't think this was going to be possible. I didn't know I was going to weigh 200 pounds. I'm only 20 pounds away from my high school skinny, which was 180 pounds when I graduated. So 20 pounds away from high school weight, that's like a big goal right there, right? And I know y'all think I'm crazy. Hold on. Get our light back. Okay. Maybe if I go like this, you can see. Okay. I'll hold you guys out here. I'll hold the light like this. And I'll try not to fall. Okay, here we go. I don't know how much of this you guys can see. Hope y'all can see I'm not doing this uh, video totally for y'all not to be able to see. Okay, I got it. I don't know why I always put myself in these positions to walk in the dark. I can't see. But I do it. I always do this. It's okay. Okay, operation. Let's get this flashlight going. Oh 
I'll be out of here one day. <laughs> uh, it's going to be okay. Well, that's good. And I know it's not safe to be somewhere in the middle of the night. Like, I get that. But I don't care. It is marked with these things. So, that difficult. I just don't need to trick. That's the problem. I don't want to trick. And I feel like this trip's... Oh, here, see? Here's another one. See? I can see in the dark. I just have to shine those little things. I I wouldn't be able to do this before. I mean, you know, when I was um, 160, like I said. Yeah, I could do it. I was never healthy, though. I didn't eat right. I was eating um, uh, 1,200 calories of junk. Right, so I was eating the seed oils. I didn't know that there was a problem. I didn't know that it, uh, the food industry was poisoning us. And now that um, thanks to the internet and listening to people like Dr. Barry talk, um, Dr. what's the name of the Paul Sazano, I think, um, listening to uh eric, i think eric berg and hearing people talk about insulin resistance and hearing all this information about seed oils and when i first watched the video about seed oils that they were like oh it's industrial oil and they were like you know what we could put it in the food instead of the machines and i mean i'm just saying it wrong but I'm just saying, like, that's what it sounded like to me. Like, anytime they want to, um, oh, see, here's the, the beginning of the trail. So we made it to the beginning of the trail. Yay! All right. I didn't know that the government was trying to kill us with allowing these foods. So I didn't know that. All right, so... Now, I got some light from a house light, and I'm shining the light so I could see down the road. So without that light, it would be pretty dark out here. I'm walking by the lake again. And I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, there we go. I got one mile to go. It says it would take me 23 minutes to walk the rest of the way. So, if I, because I did the GPS, and now it says one more mile. So I've already gone officially four miles. One more mile to go. That'll make five miles. Okay, I just had to jump over the creek. So, you wanna see that? Back close to the truck stop now. And uh, it's like maybe a block away. So I'm gonna say I've completed the five mile walk. It took me a while. And going around that bend again. That's, I'm so happy I wasn't recording or nothing because that would've been done. But I had to like hang on to a branch. And I was, you know, using my flashlight or whatever. And, uh, be out of the way of the traffic because I had to go on the side. So it was where it's like an inch in the corner room to stand. So I was like hanging on to the side and then the person went by and then I had to run while there was no cars coming. I had to run around the whole bin just to get, uh, pa you know, safely past it and stuff. So that was crazy. Bye.